My name is Athena Theodoro, and each of us here today represents and speaks for 80 other neighbors from our Somersdale Drive neighborhood. Where do you live right now? I live on 728 Somersdale Drive. I would also like to point out that Mr. Hurst has taken the time to tirelessly answer our questions, <coughs> and for that we greatly thank you. I am relatively new to Webster. I have lived in Webster for a mere 26 years, all of them on Summerdale Drive. Many of my neighbors have lived there even longer since the first phase of its development. Along with you, we have seen Webster grow during these years. Its population has increased, our subdivision being an example of that growth. We view Webster's growth as a positive development, but with development come um, changes and unexpected consequences. When my husband and I moved to Somerdale Drive, we felt safe in having our daughters ride their bikes or rollerblade on our street without any supervision. Unfortunately, it is no longer safe for children to be unsupervised on our street. There are several, several reasons why this is the case. Somerdale Drive is a neighborhood that is situated between Gravel Road and Five Mile Line and has the distinction of being a straight, easy cut through to the 104 Expressway, to R.L. Thomas High School, to Wilmington Middle School, and to the plazas on Hard and Holt Road. Our street is a great benefit to the residents on and off Gravel Road. Likewise, our street is a great benefit to the residents on and off Five Mile Line, giving them an easy cut through to Empire Boulevard via Gravel Road. This was not a problem in the beginning, but as new housing tracks developed off Gravel Road over the years, the neighborhood population increased, and the traffic on our street increased significantly. We have found it more and more difficult to safely enjoy our neighborhood. What is most sad for us is hearing our new, na our new neighbors with young children say that had they known about the traffic on our street, they would not have moved. When drivers do not follow the speed limit or the rules of the road, our safety is compromised. I would like to share two examples of this. Recently, I witnessed a driver passing the car in front because it was going too slowly. On another more serious occasion, while I was driving, the school, the school bus was coming towards me with its lights flashing. I stopped, as did many others behind the school bus. A van was stopped behind me. I'm on the opposite side of the school bus. The school bus shut its lights, but before either I or the school bus had a chance to move, the driver behind me passed me, disregarding that a school bus with children could have moved at any moment <laughs> and thereby causing an accident. We are concerned for the safety of the children in our neighborhood, especially since the elementary school's start time will be earlier next year. Our children will be waiting for the school bus about 7.15 a.m. when it is dark in the fall and winter months, coinciding with the morning rush hour of traffic. According to the data reported to us by Mr. Hurst, 10,000 vehicles travel on our street on our weekly basis. That is a significant number. That is 1,428 vehicles per day, 60 vehicles per hour, one car per minute, per minute around the clock, 24 hours. According to the data reported to us by Officer uh, Ryder, 
85% of the drivers traveling our street are in compliance with the speed limit, which is 25 miles per hour. But that means 50% are not in compliance. 15% of 10,000 is 1,500 cars. 1,500 cars exceed the acceptable level of speed per week or 214 on average per day. 214 cars speeding on our street every day on average. And I would pass it on to another neighbor. Good evening, members of the Webster Town Board. My name is Lorraine Cheney and I live on Somerdale Drive. I grew up on Schlegel Road. We moved here in 1968 when my dad took a job with Xerox and Webster. My mom did later, so Webster has been my home for many years. We had horses at Hills Stable, and my parents were members of the Webster Ridge Runner Snowmobile Club. I've worked in Xerox for Xerox and Webster for over 21 years. One of the reasons we chose Somerdale Drive in 2002 was because of how quiet it was when we looked at our house. We wanted a 25 mile an hour street where we felt our child would be safe, walking to neighbors' houses, riding her bike, etc. Once she got old enough to ride a bike on her own, I refused to let her because of the dangerous speed and amount of traffic due to all the developments that have found in our town by then. I've had people yell at me to get off the side of the road, give me the middle finger when I ask them to slow down. And one day last year, when I crossed the street at the end of Somerdale, my Middlebury, a woman had to brake hard to avoid hitting me rolling through the stop sign as I was crossing with my dog. When I told her to slow down, she said, no, you slow down. I called 911. Only a few weeks ago at that same intersection while I was walking my dog again, a man rolled through the stop sign. When I yelled to him there was a stop sign there, he yelled back, I know, and ran it anyway. Halloween night, when so many families were out walking on the side of the road, we were stunned by the vehicles traveling the speed that they were down our street. And we also had a couple rows of mailboxes taken out by reckless drivers. There are some new, better speed control devices, as well as ideas given to you by neighbors <clears throat> that can slow down traffic and accommodate rescue vehicles, which was brought up to us as a reason not to install speed pumps. I printed copies of these for reference, and Chris has them. It's very bad, sad to hear that new neighbors would not have moved here if they had known the speed of traffic was this bad. Please help us make this a safer street for everyone, whether it is a more constant police president, presence or by the other suggestions made by the residents on the street. Thank you. And I live on 760 Somerdale Drive. I am Jim Cheney, uh, Lorraine's husband. So I live at 760 Somerdale as well. Um, I walk our dog around the block on weekends and the occasional weekday. Um, over 15 years, I've come to many of my neighbors, some by face and some by name. Somerdale has no sidewalks or bike path or Residents have to walk in the street. Some days are better than others with the traffic. Um, I welcome drivers to cut through if they obey the speed limit and slow down when they see a child, um, jogger, bicyclist, or electric wheelchair. Um, there's a gentleman with an electric wheelchair who walks his dog on our street, and people fly right by him. Um, so uh, I had a conversation with a middle aged driver who was clearly approaching me at 30 to 35 miles per hour, when just discouragingly I shook my head. He came to an abrupt stop and angrily, angrily said to me, I come through here a lot and you always shake your head at me. I would like to know why. I asked him if he knew the speed limit. He said yes, and that he was going around 25 miles an hour. I told him it looked a lot faster than that. I asked him if he took driver's ed. He would not answer. I told him what I had been taught driver's ed and asked him to politely slow down, that we are tired of people racing through our street. I started to ask what housing track he lived in and he drove away. A few years back, I got a habitual speeder to come to a stop. She had a Buick that was cool and recognizable. I asked her to slow down, especially when her pedestrians like myself in the road. She said, you're not the police, and you should be on the sidewalk. I said, what sidewalk? She then asked, why don't you walk on the lawns? Before I could respond, she gunned her engine and took off faster than she approached. With roughly 40 homes on summer debt paying an average of no less than $5,000 a year in taxes, that's $200,000 per year, we deserve to have something done. The easiest of which would be well timed speed patrols during rush hour mornings and evenings and some weekends between 12 and 4 p.m. 
It might slow down the speeders and make them have second thoughts about cutting through if they have to go 25 or less. We're making many suggestions that $200,000 can certainly pay for. Thank you. Thanks, Jim and Lorraine. We got just two more. Paul. Paul and uh, Diana will rock on. Uh, my name is Paul Walrib and I reside at 748 Somerdale Drive. In the first part of October, when I was getting the mail, I heard the take off from the stop sign, a crate box. I knew from the sound that it was traveling fast. I turned to look at the vehicle as I moved to the side of the road. The cast in front of me moved off 40 miles per hour. It was less than five feet from me and maintained the same speed. It didn't even slow down. Whether it be speeding vehicles or those that are at 30 or below, they have no regard for those individuals that are walking or crossing the street. They don't slow down or move over. The street has become dangerous due to increased traffic and the speeders. What if I was hard of hearing and didn't hear a vehicle? What if my eyesight wasn't real good and I couldn't see the vehicle? What if I was not steady at my feet anymore and I slipped or fell? I consider myself fairly good at estimating vehicle speed because I used a radar gun in September to track the speed of the vehicles in the street. I tried to learn the plate number, make, model, color, anything else I could. But with the speed and too many cars at once, I couldn't get much. <clears throat> I had to stop logging and tracking the vehicles when I found my life in jeopardy from a couple vehicles stopping, approaching me, and threatening me. And to top it off, a vehicle that almost hit me looked to be the same vehicle I clocked twice with radar on Monday, September 10th. The first time doing 36, the second time doing 40. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Diana Strassman, and I have lived at 741 Somerdale Drive for the last 31 years. I will be very, very busy. So as a final thought, uh, we would like the board to consider that Middlebury and Somerdale are not just streets, but neighborhoods of people. We would like to be able to use the streets in our neighborhood to walk, run, ride bikes, stroll babies, walk our dogs and visit each other in safety. We are a community of people who care about each other. As an aside, yesterday one of my neighbors came down and he said to me, our neighborhood has changed so much that it's not a neighborhood anymore. We are a neighborhood, we're just a street because it's too difficult to um, manage to, get to, to visit each other and walk and ride our bikes easily. So with that in mind, at this time, we would like to invite the board to share possible solutions for the safety of the residents of Somerdale County. And we thank you so much for listening to our concerns at this time. I, I just I want to add one brief thing that uh, all the comments that were made, we have a copy of I can hand that over um, uh, just so to say so that it as a reference to everything everybody said. <coughs> data that Paul had collected when he uh, was doing some uh, speed data collection of his own. Uh, and uh, there's also the thing that Lorraine referenced regarding a certain type of speed bump um, that might not be a problem for snowplow. <clears throat> and what I did not include, but I can if needed, there was a petition that was previously um, given to the town on the dated May 22nd, and it had, I think, 81 signatures. I think it was every single house on Somerdale, with the exception of two, I believe. And so we also have that if you don't, and we'll let you have it. Thank you. And then because he, can't, he continues to tell me he can't do that because of 
uh, the stove up and the wear and tear. And you're going to find, if you go over in Benfield, I forget the name of the street. I was, you're going to find if you put the speed jumps in the road, they're going to be on your front yard. Because people go around the speed bumps, they go through your front yard because they don't want to go over the speed bumps. And then you got another problem. Okay? But Huntington is the green street of Benfield. Uh, their front yards are always full up because they did put speed bumps up. And then you've got people that want to put snow fences up. I mean, it, it, I'm not trying to make excuses. I'm trying to tell you what we know and what we've gone through with speed bumps. They're just. The other ones have the invert ones that go like this. It's still over the top. You've got the invert ones. They fill with water and they freeze in the wintertime. Going down the street, you're going to be doing 25 miles an hour, and you've got to put your brakes on, you hit one of those things, and then somebody's yard. Because the front brake, you got to brake, and the tires are going to skid, and off you go. It's the other side of the inverts to speed bumps. So I'll let Joe speak to that first. I just want to tell you about how to speed bumps up. I think I explained it. You got to be fine. Mike. Oh, you're Mike. <coughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> um, as far as the speed bumps, our, all our plows are set up as high speed plows. We're not like, unfortunately, Penfield, I did speak with them. And when they plow Huntington Meadows, they have a hydro turn that can turn flat, push up and over the speed bumps, um, as you see. Like Ron said, they have put stakes in there. Um, they put the speed bumps in, then people are driving on the lawns. Then the residents put the stakes up, um, which is close to the town to liability should somebody get hurt in the stakes to stop from driving there. Um, it, it was successful to a point, but you talk about Penfield too, I constantly hear is that the neighbors from either pickup trucks with stuff in the back or cars that are getting old or loose, that all through the night they're listening to stuff go over the speed bumps. Um, my bigger concern would be the, the pl uh, high speed plows. If we were to soften those or put speed bumps in, they would have to be such a soft transition for my plow to clear it, it, it would defeat the whole purpose of slowing traffic down. They would just fly it almost similar to what's in front of Lowe's, but even less. Uh, it would have to be a softer approach for me to be able to, to clear that. Uh, plus, right now, the town's policy is not for speed bumps. Um, there's other, because some of the stuff is enforceable. Um, I'm hoping that you said that somebody had other suggestions for uh, stuff um, as well. I'd like to ask a comment on that. Sure. <coughs> My name's Gary Moss. I live 764 somewhere else today. As far as the speed bumps go, I work for uh, RG&E. I'm in every town, every neighborhood, and there are, every town has speed bumps or the inverts, and they are extremely effective. So I guess everybody don't have the same plows you have, and that's every single town in Monroe County has them. And, and a lot of the towns don't have the same plows that we do. I'm just saying, every right. town right. does. Right. And or, honestly, we've gone, um, there's a couple of things. We've gone to, um, a lot of our trucks are a lot larger trucks. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the trucks have smaller trucks, the uh, uh, low pros or the 550s or 750s. Grease. Um, and yeah, that and, we're, and then a lot of times they use those in the subdivisions. Um, we're not necessarily, we don't, we're deleting the smaller trucks. We have deleted, we're down to two left. Um, in there, um, those actually one of them did have high return. They were doing for like Forest Lawn, um, MacArthur Vineyard, just smaller subs off of Lake Road. But even those, we're putting hammerhead turns around. Our, um, if you look down those streets, we've widened them now. We're bringing them up to current town standards so that we can accommodate them with larger trucks. Um, so well, we're worried about our street. We're not worried about four streets. Excuse me. Boxes. High speed plows. High speed, yeah. high speed yep. plows. They are a little too high speed because when they go by, mm -hmm. yeah, they go by fast and furious and it comes to shape. I don't think that's really good for a house. That's a lot of iron out there. If the, yeah. Those those plows, the plows alone probably weigh what most of your cars do. Uh, they're very heavy. But um, shape. Um, and, and, I, and I don't doubt it, um, but they're not. We have all these trucks that are equipped with computers. The humor, uh, computers have upper parameters set on them. So, I mean, we have, we've had people down on Phillips Road and South Road subdivision saying we're going 40, 45 through the subdivision. <clears throat> I know for a fact that the computer is shut off at 29, which will send the truck into an error mode. Um, so they are set. Not to we're plowing your streets at 29, especially subdivision. I mean, every intersection they can come up to, they have to turn right anyhow because they are high <coughs> permanently angled to the right. They have to discharge, they only discharge the right. Everything is right-hand turn. That's how we get in and out of the subs. So I know they're not 
that speed, but it's a lot of iron, a lot of weight. Those, those trucks are weighing 70,000 pounds down the road. At, at, at the risk of my own neighbors attacking me, I, I, I would like to re recall what Mr. Nez said a few minutes ago, that no matter what kind of a speed pump it might be, that there's risk of people driving around it on the lawns or noise as vehicles mm -hmm. bounce over. So one thing that we'd have to think about is what if what if we said, oh yeah, speed pumps are fine. Pumps. 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 Where are we putting them? Yeah. What if, you know, you know, I'm sure the town would have recommendations on the right places, but whose house is that in front of? And if so you got your windows open at night on the summer night, and if you got as many cars still coming on that street, the same. Every time. Bump, 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 bump. That's what you're going to hear. I just don't want us to get too, too in depth about only one option. So, so let's talk about some of the other things we can talk about as well. Okay. What can we do? We're not there yet. Let's We've got more to talk about, folks. I want to hear from uh, Police Chief uh, Joel Leaker. Yeah. We have bought some. Uh, we have bought some new equipment uh, lately that uh, we can put on holes that you probably didn't know were there until we told you they were there. Uh, that measure the speed. They're not the ones from years ago where you drove down the street and you saw that you were doing 25 or 30. We have new ones now that just uh, collect the data, so the driver doesn't see how fast they're going but we have the information on how fast they're going. We're looking at other ones now that are run by solar that can be put up there that can put shoulder speed. We're, look, we're looking at those right now. We have, we have the purchase. They're, they're expensive, but you know, we have to look at that. But Joe has been four times, three, four times this year, has taken data from your street. I think he's related to you. It was reported at 85% of the people are not speeding, and there are some that are. Go ahead, Joe. Well, just, um, so I graduated from Webster School in 1985. Math is a long time ago, so <laughs> there are cars speeding, but I'll just, so if I can make these available, I know I passed like a SNP, but I thought what would be important, it was like a four meter. This is actually one traffic study. And it actually hits every, it hits every hour, so just pick a date, August 31st. If you pick um, between, um, um, I'll just pick one day, so I know, uh, say August 31st, that, that whole day, I had 11 cars that traveled between 36 and 40 miles an hour. For a police officer to be there, that's like one vehicle per hour traveling over the speed limit. I, mm -hmm. it's, it would be difficult to know exactly what time, you know, it's, it, they're broken down per hour, so um, I'll keep the, I'll keep special attention yet. I personally sat up and, and watched the intersection down there. I've sat up in some people's driveways and I'm sure people have looked at me like what's the unmarked police car doing there. <coughs> people will kind of see like an unmarked car and kind of slow and then continue on. I've never personally saw one blow by it. I know the guys have been down there, the officers have been down there checking that and have some tickets. So we'll continue to give special attention to it. Um, we did uh, four traffic studies and I, and I actually handed out the, the I emailed the just kind of the snippet of what I thought would be important. The first traffic study we hit Middlebury in Somerdale, and that was kind of, it actually collected traffic coming off of gravel, which we thought would be important too, but I, after finding that out, it was more Somerdale, what we wanted. So um, at that time, vehicles coming, either leaving onto gravel or coming off of gravel, but the 85th percentile of the traffic was 27 miles an hour, more or less. The first one we did on Somerdale, was 32 miles an hour, the 85th percentile, that was the speed. And like I say, there are vehicles, and I can give you the breakdown. If someone wants, I can email it or hand a packet out. It breaks down per hour on each each time during each day. The, um, because we wanted to, yes. Did you just say 32 miles an hour is the average? 85% of the cars are doing 32 miles or less. It's, it's five, six old. It's, it is. Yes. Sir? Yes. But, I mean, the speed limit's 25. So if you're going 30, that's 10% over. So, you know, if you're going on, if you're driving on a street that's 45 miles an hour and you're going 10% over, that's, you know, 40, what is that, 
45, that's 50 miles an hour. So you'd be fine with that? I mean, it's like 10% over on the expressway is, is 66. I'm not gonna get pulled over for 66? That's speeding. I mean, so 30 what, miles so we, an hour that was speeding. First, that was the first traffic study. The next traffic study we did. But you did. seem to be fine with people going 32 miles an hour on our street, and we're not fine with that. Well, that was the first study that people identified a problem, and that's when we sent officers out there and did a traffic study. I didn't say it's acceptable. I said we have officers that are doing special detentions. Um, so we did another test. Uh, the next, we were at 30 miles an hour. And then um, we were asked that I had to, um, two of the tests for 804 Summer Dale and Len. Uh, someone suggested to move it, so we put it to 765 uh, Summer Dale. And at that point, the last test we had hit 29 miles an hour. That was the 85 percent of the cars at 29 miles an hour. Sir, sure if I may interrupt, I live at 804 Summer Dale, driving in this town. But I live right on the corner of Northbrook and Summer Dale. Okay. And I had seen that that unit posted on the. Uh, street sign there and I, I don't know how to word it but in the real world I mean I'm right there and their cars fly by a lot of times I mean every a lot of cars fly by my house and um, I know you have all those studies there with all the numbers and the times but it seems like in real life but I, I mean I got a big picture window in my living room and I just see them Fly by all the time, or I'm in my, in my yard. And yes, you, you've actually been doing a good job pulling cars over for a while, because I'm always on my front yard doing work, and I've seen your police officers pull over cars, and which is good. And I give you credit for that. But it seems like the stretch of Somerdale Drive between Gray Fox Run and Somerdale, it's a straightaway. Okay, they had stop sign there when they're going east down Somerdale towards Five Mile Line. It's drag trip city. I see it all the time. It's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Anyway. And I, I've also been by com confronted by people also, you know, correcting them on their speed. Just to add on that yeah. too, sorry to delay here, but like it's the same thing. I've been there. We've been there for 31 years. The original plans of that track was a circle around Somerset. There was not going to be anything coming off of Gravel Road. That was the original plans. And the town determined that because the fire department was so far away, the gravel of the fire department couldn't get in, so they determined to open that up to gravel. So now what happened to that, and they changed the high school over, you were there probably, right, Thomas? There was no stop sign there. And I gotta tell you what, literally drag strip all the way down. So we came to the board, same thing. And a good friend of mine who's now a retired Webster police officer, and we fought with this board, and they said, until somebody, basically what they said, until somebody gets hurt or killed, not much we could do. That retired officer told me, he says, the only thing you can do is get data. You need to call 911, get your neighbors to call 911 every single time you see someone speed. We did, we got the data, the town agreed, we need to stop sign there. But that was tough getting that. So now we got a whole different scenario where they are adding the tracks, and there is no exits on the expressway, and that's where we're headed. It's just pure cut through now. And basically, that stop sign is obsolete most of the time. I can tell you that. They run that below that stop sign, and I'm three doors down from that stop sign. And it's the same thing. I mean, you can yell and scream, but then as soon as you get this, or someone's going to stop, and then there's going to be an altercation, potentially. So, I mean, and I'm sure you guys are going to do whatever you can to get help us out. But yeah, that's no, just where we are. We're desperate. No, I'll, I'll keep. Can you call 10,000 cars? Pardon? 10,000 cars a week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Going down your street. There is no shoulder. It's a narrow street. You could barely fit two cars on it. And if there's, God forbid, if someone's parked, of God's earth, anybody, a service person parks on the street, it's like a game of chicken, like who's going to really stop and give the right away? That's a lot of traffic. Now, around the clock, maybe not so much, but think about that, you know, between 7 and 7. That's a lot of traffic. In the wintertime, it gets worse. That road wasn't built for winter for that much down. 
Chief Rager, yeah. when you're doing the speed control, when you're doing the speed control or the um, traffic control, are you just pulling over or are you actually writing tickets? They, they've done both. Because they've done both. think of the revenue <laughs> <laughs> that you could make if you wrote tickets on a more aggressive basis. Now, about 10 years ago, they did, our neighbor um, talked to the police department. And they did a uh, four, he um, found out they did a four day study where they sat, it was like Monday through Thursday or Tuesday through Friday for just like three, four hours in the afternoon when that's when everybody's coming home from work and coming home from school. And he said in a four day time frame, they wrote 40 tickets. Let me just clarify one thing. Tom, no, Tom Borg does not tell the police department to write tickets. Okay. No, I'm not saying, I just said just leave the revenue. I didn't say that. We don't put rules on them or anything. They, I know. They I know. Up. Just, just so we correct that. We're not in the revenue business. I know. I totally okay. understand. Okay. Did your, the other, yes, sir. Did your dad have to show anything because you've you, you, you broken it down by the hour? I'm, I'm the one that ran the radar on the down the street, ran the radar dump. Yep. And I had a few people stop and yell at me and throw me the finger and scream and you can't do this. And I had a couple of people come back and threaten me oh. and it was well, like, okay, I'm not working on the road. <laughs> but I was trying to collect data to verify what we see against, because I already knew you were collecting data, to see how close we were. Mm -hmm. And most of mine, now I wasn't out there 24 hours a day, but most of mine, and Mr. Adams has data here, uh, that I was most of the average, if I averaged it all out, from what I took, I was 28, about 28, 29 miles per hour. But there were the occasional ones, 36, 40, sure. 45. Does yours break down certain times of the day? Because Absolutely. I was trying to get morning and it's, afternoon. It has everything in it, and it actually it's so smart that it tells me when I should be out there. It says that the peak times will be certain, you know, between 3 and 6. To help, let me mention that I, I saw a summary of your data electronically, but not until yesterday. Okay. So um, uh, I have it, I know a couple other people have it, but I know the entire neighborhood doesn't. And when we have a chance, we can, we can forward that to anybody who has an email for it. We actually work very well with the school district, so when there's people that were talking about buses before, they will call us and say somebody they'll if the bus driver can get a plate number they'll give us and we'll track those people on you can't run them a ticket because we didn't observe them we go down and tell them mm -hmm. you can't go by the stop signs of the school buses and things so if there are issues and people that are doing things the school bus drivers call us a lot and they'll say they'll they'll let us know they'll notify us of violations that we can track down people so um as that happens next year when times change and school buses you know people drive by the, the, the flashing lights we're in, we're in conversations with this group. Now what about, par about, what about partial bus? plates? What about partial plates and partial descriptions and stuff? Because that's what I had in my data. I, was, I wasn't able to collect the entire license plate, sometimes not the color of the vehicle. I've got that in my data. I mean, can you do anything with that? Is it partial? So um, the police can't write... I, I know you can't write tickets. Unless I observe that ticket. That's correct. So, right. correct. But a school bus violation, we will track those people down, and, and sometimes if we... If it's a partial plate, we may not be able to figure that one out. Um, but what about a partial plate with a description of the vehicle, color, sedan, SUV? Uh, we can track things down like that. Yes, ma'am. Some of the some of the problems are the school bus, the empty school bus, the finish route the off, and those new subdivisions. And they want to just be feed back to the garage. Got some street things. I can talk to Mr. Kameen about that. I'll, 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 I'll make a point. I mean, and the <coughs> other thing is when they are going there, could they go back to I mean, the empty one's going back to uh, yeah. the yeah. the 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 Today, today. I'll talk to Mr. Kameen. Today, everybody's in a hurry. Oh, yeah. Well, today, everybody's in a hurry. And we, the, the, the town board, not just necessarily this town board, but many of the boards before us, have dealt with this issue many times, and it does seem as though it gets worse. Um, we've talked about the speed bumps before. We installed stop, stop signs like we did on uh, Summerdale. There's one on uh, uh, down the street from me. Um, 
think we have three of them in town. Yes, we have three of them. And the reason we only have three of them is because the, the manual that the New York State Municipal Law recommends that stop signs not be used as speed control devices. That they that yeah. sometimes they're they actually right. state it's less at times <coughs> cause more accidents than pre prevent because you put a stop sign when you guys got a stop sign on your street, how long was it before everybody started seeing it? it Even with the red flags on it, everything it took a while. It did. Honestly God, it, it, just it, it takes through. a while. It, it takes a while. Like every every time there's a new traffic yeah. control device put up, they have to put signs on the road and put the big red markers on it and all this and that. And We've gone through this many, many times, and I can't tell you that I have. I was Joe's predecessor. I worked for the highway department for almost 40 years, and this has been an ongoing issue forever because people are increasingly, increasingly in a hurry. What has helped? your experience. What has helped? Well, the stop signs on those on those streets, the neighbors have told me that they that they helped. They do. Okay. Um, <coughs> I, I purposely, uh, two days ago, went through uh, uh, one over in Penfield, um, Huntington Meadows, mm -hmm. and it works. But boy, I wouldn't live on that street for all the money. I, I, I wouldn't live on that street. You, you, you can't do five miles an hour down that street. Uh, it, it's just, it, it's awful. Um, so I, I, don't, I wouldn't consider that to be an answer, um, even if Joe's Plows and everything could handle the situation. Um, just to me, the way they have it set up over there, take a ride down there. It's off a panorama trail. It goes over to Clark Road. Take a ride down there and see what you think of it. I, I actually, you know, I think we all have. Yeah. I've driven that road when my kids were little. They, that is the response. So it's what a, else works? You only hit them once. It's yeah. effective, yeah. especially when I hit it with my yeah. RGN truck. I <laughs> emptied the truck, <laughs> and that's right at five miles an hour. It, it, it's, it's, it's tough. So it's I, tough. Or, or I think we're open to one thing that I heard tonight that Brown mentioned was, um, even though it might be quite costly, is the signs up that tell you how fast you're going. I was just going to ask about that. Actually, it's the first, first thing that I wrote down as I was listening to the first couple of residents, and I know that I travel the Blossom Road between the expressway and the Whitton Block, and there has been a sign there mm -hmm. for years that's up on the pole and it flashes mm -hmm. how quickly you go. Yeah. And it slows me down mm -hmm. every time. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I'm not speeding, yeah, that's but good. boy, I don't want it to show exactly. one mile over what it's supposed to be because I'm conscientious of that. Mm -hmm. It makes me aware. And I'm not sure that it's going to, we're not going to get 100%. We all have to know that. And, and also, but I think it just, it does make you more aware. And I was going to ask both, both Chief and, and Mr. Herbst what your thoughts are on something. Well, I've been, I've been talking with Rob as far as that because they offer different models. They range anywhere from 2,500 to like 7,000. Mm -hmm. They're solar, so you have to run power to them, and you can change them. I know, like, if you get off of Elm Grove to go towards Brighton, mm -hmm. that one is there permanent, that's been permanently mounted yeah. there. Right. A lot of times it's, it's education. Some of the people, you do, you, again, we get so lost with, with being so sidetracked and everything we do in our day, we're, think, we're not thinking about that. A lot of times we're driving down the road, we're not even looking at our speed, we're not even paying attention to it. That educational portion of it can be a vast majority of this. You're going to get, like Joe said, you're going to get the, the idiots that drive down there 45, whatnot. I have them in my neighborhood. I, I approach it a different way. I told you, keep rigor today, and I won't divulge how I use it. But, but nonetheless, <laughs> so um, I took care of it. <laughs> but I took care of it for the odd idiot. Um, but education is a vast majority of this. And I think a lot of people just, again, with, with being distracted driving, you guys see it. We see it all the time, too. Um, it's it, just we get so involved with everything else. Not paying one more, one more thing um, is that in your neighborhood, it's at 25 miles an hour. If you're walking down the street with your dog or your kids or a stroller, 20 miles an hour is too fast. It's mm -hmm. going to seem like they're going yep. 100 miles. An hour. Yeah, 25 miles is fine, but anything above that, especially because there's the volumes. If you're walking down and there's higher volume, when you have one car, but several cars coming at you, it's 30. That's when it becomes, when, that's when you feel unsafe. You know, well, I, feel and I know that cars driving close to you, you often think they're going a lot faster than they actually are. Mm -hmm. I know I live on, I live on uh, Brookwood Drive, which is right off of Bay Road, and it's the first street north 
of the expressway and it always seemed to me that the cars coming around that curve down there had to be doing 60 miles an hour because if you look this way, you look that way, you pull out and they're right on you. So I had the police come down and the majority of people were going five, that's five miles was, an hour over the speed limit. That's what I was finding when I was doing the radar gun. It was like, yeah, they looked to be doing about 35 and when I started doing this. Using the radar gun, I find I was I was estimated higher than what it really was. That's it. And we go to radar school, and uh, the slope of the vehicle, the color of the vehicle, all those things make the perception of cars going faster or slower, and it's true. Yeah. It and um, so the the nice thing about a pole sign that, that shows the speed is people actually we have one in the summertime. We put on in neighborhoods. I'll put it right in front of someone's house, and they'll sit out in their chair and watch the cars go by, and the screen shows 35, 40. And they'll say, well, that car looked like it's going a lot faster and it's right up on a digital board. So that's one nice thing that if you have one of those in a neighborhood, you can actually be walking down the street and look and see, yeah, the car is going faster. No, it's a red car that has a slope front end. It's only doing now, 28. I, I think some of the neighbors had asked for, for now at least, and I know we're get, not getting in the right time of the year for this, but they had asked for the portable one to come and sit in, but we were told it was broken. It was out as well. I usually don't take it out in the winter. So what what I did with that one, that one you could take off of before I purchased this new one that we have now that's kind of covert. And actually, some people called us saying it was they thought it was a bomb. I don't know if someone from your neighborhood, but it looks almost like a small little. If you saw it, some people called in what it was, and they said there's a suspicious Black device box. in my front yeah. yard. Can you come down and get it? So I'm glad no one broke it. But before Black I would box. take before I would take speed off of that that trailer, I set up and. and use that. They would collect data and everything, but people would see how fast you're going. So I never really thought it was that accurate because everyone knows, well, I should slow it on, I should go right, fast. Right, but that's what we're talking about is right. using that as a deterrent. We can do that. Yeah, usually it's, it's off, so it needed new batteries, and I was using this other device. So I didn't know that request went out, I maybe, but I I didn't have that one out much this year because I put out the other uh, the other trailer. I put out um, the, the small... Um, In here. Study how fast the traffic is going. We often don't get true data because people slow down when they see it. So we're, so we're not getting what they're really doing if it weren't there. Oh, I understand. Which to me sort of speaks to why we have if it's solar powered or whatever, some sort of permanent yeah. indication. And, and I'm kind of curious as to how, I mean, you've all brought several ideas to the table. What are your thoughts about something? Because with the fact that there's a new construction going on in gravel, we have a lot of construction vehicles going through. There was a Sunday morning that we were going out for a bike ride, and there was, what was it? And we had to get off to the side because the truck was going so bad. So some little boy, you know, some, heavy equipment. Just, yeah, Polar. with a backhoe and, and stuff. Boy, heavy equipment. And yeah. they were cutting through the gravel to the new track. Are there guidelines in place where 
you know, vehicles like that, they have to use the main roads. No, when you agree to have a new track in place, place, unless it's weight restricted, you know, they 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. they just function their GPS well, and they'll we can, go that well, way. Yeah, so. exactly. But we can, I mean, that's something that we can ask. And most of the developers are compliant to what we ask for. Well, that would be helpful, too. Yeah. Helpful. We've even had car carriers come down and say, yeah. and you wonder where they're going. It's right. Mm -hmm. And so that's a and then dropping a car off somewhere or something? Like that? I, I have no idea, but you know, it, you can see. I had one of mine picked up and did it. It's turned. No, I understand that, but it turned out to be. You know, you can see that it turned out to be. But first of all, I wanted to thank you, first of all, before we keep going, because I do feel many of us did feel that with your presence on the street, we noticed that a little bit less traffic and a little more compliance with the with the speed. I think that once the word gets out that it's being monitored, and I know you can't be there all the time, but once the word gets out that you are there. I'm just looking at the data, it started at 32 or down to 29 from the original traffic study. And I know I was working at Halloween night and I told the officers hit I had a couple calls and we want to make sure. So I, had the, I hope they were up and down somewhere. I know. They were. Uh, they were. Uh, they were. Uh, they were. Good job. Somebody called mm -hmm. and, the, and the police officer said, I'm on the street right now. So was, whatever that was, he was, was there immediately. Was, was that you? Were you giving donuts away? <laughs> 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 I, I called. It was three to five minutes. And I saw the officer go down. Yeah. And he did pull someone over. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a good car that went by. I was yeah, very I happy to see him. I told him to hit the track. And I know that when that call came in, I heard the officer say, I'm almost there. So he must. Than either five mile or gravel, but so. Yeah. Um, a question I have on, a, on, a, on as we're brainstorming ideas, uh, when we've heard before, okay, you see something called 911. Okay, let's say that I capture a perfect video of a car's license, full license plate, and, and, I, and it, you know, my radar gun says it's, they're doing 50. I call 911, then what happens? Because you can't play the ticket, right? So, because I'm trying to, I'm struggling with. Why bother? Why, why call? Well, here's why you call because actually, so I've only had, believe it or not, I think you've had maybe a couple calls in your track for the whole. This is all the calls of service for the whole year on your street, and most of them are traffic stop or us, <laughs> or us just being down or checking your area. So um, there's not a lot of calls, so people aren't really calling us to say there's a problem. I know there's a problem because the supervisor Tom Ward says right. they make sure your officers are down there. But as far as people calling, I don't have a lot of calls. But why, so, call, why call if you can't do anything? Well, so if you say, hey, there's a car that just went flying down the street, they call, and then that car might have been a five mile at the school. There's only two ways to come out, you know, as a gravel or five miles. So if there's a car speeding or doing something they shouldn't be doing, you call us. That car, you know, if you don't call, we'll never stop the car. If you I, do call. I can interject there. And we had this year, and I know that Ron, we had, we had mentioned on even July TV. Right. Um, this is the third year in a row where we've had people throwing stuff out at our crews, uh, constantly um, barraging us with foul language and speed through our, our construction zone. We're doing work. So I told the guys to start taking plate numbers down. So we started taking that down. One of the best, and I'll give you the story, um, it was the same girl every day that was driving through, flying through there, yelling up Sunday said at my guys. So we get, turned the plate number in, and I went with the officer to the door, and uh, the girl answered, the, the, the college girl answered the door. The, person. The father was standing behind him. As soon as he found out what she was doing, the officer turned to me and said, I think our job is done here because you could see the steam coming out of the father's, uh, you know, he was extremely upset. So reporting it, it may not be ticketable, but depending on who the perp is or the, you know, the, the person that's speeding, they can still at least go back to the house and, and address it that way. Well, that's intelligence information. Why is that person going fast? That person maybe just committed a robbery. That's the quickest way through. You just gave us a plate. I mean, sometimes they say, see something, say something. If you never said anything, we would, you know, it was a great car that just up the high school. There was a fight there and someone got stabbed. That, if I was a Webster kid or someone that knew a quick way to escape, I'm going to go down Somerdale, Somerset, and hit gravel in 590, I'm out of here. You know, so if you don't say something or call, like I said, we only really have two or three calls from your neighbors and we have a harassment, there's an alarm. Uh, I think they got the call from Chris, uh, Halloween night. So most of the time, most of these calls are for us writing tickets and for us being in the neighborhood. So like you say, if you don't call, you know, someone might call on Thumb Road for the speeding car when the car was on your road and you never called. So well, Thumb Road's a busy street. We're getting a lot of calls. We're going to hit that. So, But I do know that your street has been, you know, like I said, the town board of the supervisor has told me 
there's, there's, you know, make sure you're down. That's why we've done the four studies and have people down. But you have to call. I think it's just like it's been ongoing for over a decade, and maybe we're just tired of it. That we mm -hmm. think about it. We know it. Well, I personally, I mean, we should be I would be hugely in favor of those flashing signs for a, a number of reasons. One of the biggest things is I, I leave to work very um, early. I work over at the school where I live. Um, so I have to walk my dog early. It's dark. And having flashing lights would just help um, illuminate two drivers cutting through at that hour, which I have to jump out of the way because it is dark. And I do carry a flashlight and everything. Um, to, you know, they would see it better than the, the white signs that have the 25 on them. I think flashing lights would be better, so I would be in favor of that. As we get into the winter months, the road gets narrower, because as the plows go down and the snow gets higher, us walkers, especially there's a lot of us that own dogs, are forced more and more into the road, and it gets more and more dangerous when these cars are flying by. So now we're, the school is going to be switching, as we were just told, they're switching the times for the kids. So the little kids are going to be in the dark with snow banks very high, and these cars are going to be flying down. It's, it scares the daylights out of me because these kids are going to get hit. Can I can make a suggestion? I, sure. I built my own home um, 21 years ago. And when I built the house, I was the second one in the neighborhood. And as the neighborhood developed, and we had kids, and I had three little daughters, well, they're not now, they're all getting married now, but uh, no, I had three daughters. And same thing, um, they were in, standing at the school um, uh, spots in the dark. So I went around, you guys already have a petition, I went around and got a petition as far as lights, and we had we put lights on our street. We pay for it. It's $4 a year per household. Big deal. It, it lit up there, and uh, just for the safety of the kids, they were standing out at the bus stop, out at State Road, in the dark. Yeah. Um, and, and for that alone, I went around petitioning everybody, I got like 99% that there was just one person moved to the country because they, they wanted the dark. I said, well, for the one who sacrificed this, <laughs> but we put lights down the street <coughs> as far as illuminating that for safety, uh, just for exactly what you're talking about. Right. So you that might be might be an option. You know anybody at RGD? Like no. Yeah, we got our <laughs> can, can you run uh, a special line out there? Donation. <laughs> but there is many a days where I have to jump into a snowbank with my dog because of the oh, Yeah. <laughs> she wants it sometime I do. It's like chicken. It sounds like the uh, the, the, the rate on the um, your speed is sign seems to be the best option at this point because it's visual. Uh, I tossed around the idea of uh, speed humps versus speed bumps. Um, these guys probably know what they are. They're lower to the ground, uh, like two inches or something, and they they would the slow to like ten, by, uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour versus the big ones, which would be more oh, more, more disastrous on the vehicles. And there's removable ones for the But I don't know if... Is it just a light? a number of 85 percentiles, that's established by the uh, New York State DOT, and that's supposed to be the, the speed that <clears throat> most people feel is comfortable to drive on that road. A wide open street, you don't have a lot of fear. If there's trees up by the road, you tend to be more cautious because you can't see people coming in and out of the road. So the 85th isn't just an imaginary number to use, it's, it's kind of where, if you're over 85, you're, you're kind of into the crazy side of people driving. There's a hard power line you can do there. 
Um, but this, you know, the, one of the things you talk about is speed humps. And I, I worked for town humps. I, mean, I was a town engineer in Huntington, excuse me. And I put the ones in on Huntington Meadows. They work great to lower speeds. They don't reduce the amount of traffic. Your right. problem is the number of cars. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speed, from what Joe was telling Officer Rear, is that the numbers aren't, they're high, but they're not out of the world high, kind of. And, and again, it's, 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 it's kind of a perception. Yeah. I, I agree that, you know, uh, this is an old fashioned subdivision, it's a lot of straight, long lines. It's a terrible thing that we try to avoid now in subdivisions, is a little more curves so that people right. tend to. Yeah. It's a traffic kind of one, but I would like to add that perception really is everything. If you, if you see all oh, these cars going at 30 miles an hour, and you think you perceive that it's not safe, you're not going to be walking outside, you're not going to be taking your children outside because of your perception, because you don't feel that. But my question was really, if the speed limit is lower, let's just say for the sake of argument, it's lowered from 25 to 15. In those circumstances where that has happened, has that had an effect on reducing the speed limit? But the, the speed to the speed the drivers. So I guess I don't, I, I don't have a lot of expertise in that. The only thing I can say is that subdivision was probably 30 at one time. Mm -hmm. It went down to 25. Mm -hmm. right. So please have some discretion. Um, so you're looking at 30. Now the 85th percentile might be 36, 37 miles an hour. So now you've got the speed limit down to 25, 85% of hours, 29, 30 miles an hour. So you've effectively dropped the speed from possibly 36 miles an hour down to 29, from dropping the speed the speed limit. Now, I don't know if you dropped it to 15. If you There's still 15 miles an hour. Yeah, I, don't, I think you got it in school. No, the lowest is the school, the school zone is 20. Right. That's the but there have been times where we've petitioned the state and the county to lower the speed limit. <coughs> they won't lower it because of it's, you're, you're pushing it so far into the fact that almost everybody's going to break the law. You have to park a permanent truck a car out there. Well, that's that's why. I'm there's a time. There's a comfort level with every street right. of speed. If you try to arbitrarily lower it, people aren't going to follow that because they know they they do it comfortably at 25. 25 is kind of the standard for residential roads. But that does make a difference because if the speed is 25.
even though that they're not, even though they're not cut throughs, you don't see the kids out there playing in the street like you used to. You know, it was the development behind me. I heard them all summer long, and that's the new. They have the freedom to be outside. That's because they got their basketball hoops in the street. They do, right? Right. We know. It was two weeks ago. We know. I know what's going on over there. I live over there. And being retired, I walk around there so I can see what's happening around there, you know? My point is, no matter what street you live on, you've got to be concerned with traffic all the time. Well, so we were when we had our children, but it was very different. It wasn't the same. And you are correct. Every one of you is correct. It is the volume. The volume, I know it, there, we don't, we can't do too much about the volume, but the volume of traffic well, and that goes is the health significant. Curve, it goes. It's a the trucks. And yeah. Yes. Any, any any amount that we take off of there is a benefit. Right. 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 sidewalks years ago. You didn't put them in, right? right? So now all of a sudden, you've been there 31 years. You built that tree out in the right of way. You, you put a lot of other things in the right of way. And if you say to me now we want sidewalks, we can give you sidewalks. Calm down. But you're going to lose your front yard. Sorry. Okay? I'm you're going to cut. lose that tree that you put there 30 years ago. It's now in the right of way because you didn't know better that you shouldn't have pointed it there. But if we want us to put sidewalks in there, we're going to have to come through there. How many feet you up, up into your front yard to put that sidewalk there now? Mm -hmm. If we probably should have done when the thing was built in 1960, but we did not. Okay? So now we're going backwards in time. I mean, I wouldn't have a problem, but I'm sure there'd be a lot of people that would have a problem. Right. right. You, you know what we're going to do? Yeah. We're going to tear out your front yards and to put sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And the cost is $50 a foot. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then you got to make and do you expect somebody on micro to pay for your sidewalks? Or are you going to pay for your sidewalks? Because I want to answer the other gentleman's question there quickly. I don't want to get into it. You mentioned the taxes that you pay. You mentioned $5,000, but you're including your school taxes in the income. Okay? If you pay $5,000, the town of Webster gets $600. Okay? And 40% of the $600 goes to the police department. So what is left is $320. For us to do highway, assessing, this building, library, everything else, we're not getting that $5,000. Most of that, 62% of your tax dollar, goes to school. Donald Webster gets 12%. So whatever your number is, Webster getting 12%, and take 40% off of that, that goes to our great Western police, because that's what it costs. So our bottom line here is 360, you know, sir, on your $5,000, that we're getting. Yes. Did you find that the speed is really high in the winter and summer, or is it just? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. No, the volume's always there. The speed. Yeah. The, the reason it's high is because there's so much 
fire traffic going down this year in the winter, most of the time the, the pavement is basically not too bad. Right. You know, we, right. Do you want us not to plow it? That would slow them down. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw it out there. Well, you know, I know people in Somerset might want it. We'll do it like they do up in the Adirondacks. You guys couldn't plow it. You couldn't plow it very well. It was really rough. And yeah. it, it, was like it, was, roller, it was great watching cars. <laughs> 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 so we're doing our job too good. Then. <laughs> yeah. The actual speed bump yeah. there. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up, but I want to go a couple things here, and then I'll let you speak. We're going to call Carmen tomorrow, talk to him about the buses, the ones that are going down. Joe and I, and the two Joes and myself, are going to investigate putting the two of those number things, one at each end, mm -hmm. as you come in on the street. We'll find out how much it costs, how long it takes, and whatever. We'll try to get him up there soon, but we'll do our investigation on that. Um, sidewalks, Joey, I mean, it's up to you. You want them, you can have them, but there, we can, I think Joe did figure out the cost. I don't know if he but did. Yeah, not the cost, yeah. I yeah. Yeah. What it would mean to like a work. Mr. Nesbitt, mm -hmm. you would have to have uh, Not as far as the, the illuminated? Oh, yeah. uh, not at the ends. Not at the ends. <laughs> no, in the middle. Because they're in just the getting started. Yeah, more, yeah, yeah. More down in the middle. We, we will discuss that with you once we decide. Okay. 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 Well, and actually, we can pull the data because the three of the sites were from different things, so we can look at the data and see as far as strategy where the best spot is. Well, coming off of Middlebury on the summer day, I'll be more regular. That the curve going eastbound. Mm -hmm. well, there's one like right in front of my house. Yes. Um, is there any way that we can educate other than uh, obviously the speed on our street? Is there any other way that we can educate our neighbors? Well, I actually believe it or not, that's one of the things that there's looking at through some of the some of the calls. There's a couple of neighbors actually. Oh, yeah. 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 But that's what sometimes <laughs> happens. We get complaints, and then what happens is, is I mean, because I'm in a hurry. I've been, I've traveled too fast on my street before. You get in a hurry, 25 miles an hour turns into 20 real quick, and I'd be hard pressed for everyone three miles over, especially if you're late to pick a student up. Or a, so I mean, you got to look at that. If I write someone for three miles over, for 28 miles an hour, it could be any one of you. And if you get a ticket, I, I have no problem. So, but I'm saying three miles over, 28 miles an hour is not. It's fast. But if you drive it tonight, just drive 20 miles an hour and see work, see you on your speedometer how fast that is. Because for the person kind of traveling through, even they're watching, so there have been some people we've actually stopped, we didn't write tickets to from the neighborhood. So, um, but that's an education point. We stopped them. You got to slow down. This is a problem. And if you wanted to get the neighbors together in a community forum in this room, we will have the officers and Joe will do the same thing again. If you feel the neighbors need education or whatever, if you want to talk about it, uh, to your point, we will have the officers here, uh, Joe, myself, yeah. and that's not what. But if it's and we'll talk about it. If it's cut through traffic, it's not our neighbors. Yeah, it's a gravel road. Yeah. 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 You access Please use Clem if you want to go 40. And I, I don't know if I can do that because I don't know if it's them or not. How would I do that? Yeah. We could write it. Yeah. I don't know it's them. You could write, write an article. Uh, I could write an article. Yeah. I can do an article. A warning. Just a warning. I'll put something in my mouth. I already wrote next week's <laughs> today. <laughs> It'll be after Thanksgiving because I got the next no way to do that. So it'll be this first week that I do something. Would that be something you can put on your website too? Yes, put on our website. Page? Do that. I will put it on our website and I will do it for the first week in that the stand alone. Yeah. That, that would help, Mr. Nuss, but that would, I'm sure that would help. Sure. Thank you. We'll get it on our website the next couple of days. Okay, so to probably get by. Saturday, Sunday, the weather. Yes, I'll get a hold of Mr. Adams. Okay. Within the next week or so, I'll meet with Joe tomorrow. And we'll go through the what we got. And, you know, I'll get a deal out. Yeah. 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 If you want to rearrange another meeting anytime, just give me a call.
Subdivisions following on your heels don't, you know, this may be a good prelude to solutions on all our parts um, that may work in other subdivisions that may follow up with the same situation. Uh, streets. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and there isn't just necessarily one solution. It's oftentimes right, it could be multiple. Education is the biggest. One thing I do want to, I put it up today on my website, and I want to ask your opinion on it, is the fact that uh, Joe and I have been discussing over in Hard Road, if you're familiar, they call it a splash pad. It's five foot off of the gutter. Is a walking type path, something like that, Joe. More designated for pedestrian use. Right. Um, it's a safe haven, and the gutters, especially in the like Hard Road, is all gutter. Mm -hmm. um, cars very rarely. Uh, oh, if you've yeah. got somebody making a left-hand turn, cars very <laughs> rarely, where we have that, want to pass on the right because that gutter, it's it's a natural intrusion to the, the smooth transition. So um, we were talking about that, throwing it around as far as we reference it as a splash pad. We did done on a hard road, old ridge road. You'll see it. It's attached to the asphalt. It's actually on Five Mile Line for the school district. Um, mm -hmm. We're having some pedestrian it's issues there. It's on the sidewalk. It's on the So we're going to give you a bike jet for sure. Yeah. Five foot off the road, one side. Yeah. Some people on the other. Then one side, you know, is going to be upset. Yeah. Whatever side the utilities are now. Right. Yeah, yeah, we have to look so it's five it. foot. Um, so you can have a walking path for your dog, a bike path to, to do that. We're, I just put it up on my website today. We're trying to get opinions on how that works because we know the cost for that. A sidewalk is fifty dollars a foot. The splash pads are about five, five to seven. Five to seven. So I got some illustrations up there for five mile line, Holt Art. So take a look at it, it's on my website, uh, on Facebook, Ronald Desmond. The advantage to that too, uh, advantage and disadvantage. Advantage is in the wintertime we can still plow it. We set the front of the wing on there and push right. it off. Mm -hmm. The disadvantage, whoever side it's on, you're going to have a little more snow on the end of your driveway. Yeah. We're not so much at the end of your driveway, up a little bit. Uh, but it's it, depending on how you take care of your snow. But it's a safe haven. Mm -hmm. If you can see it on a hard road, it sticks out like a sore thumb mm -hmm. between Publishers Parkway and um, Clemmo, yep. that area right there. We have yeah. it's on there, it's got bicycle and pedestrian on your street, right, right on around the corner from your street, mm -hmm. from the yeah. corner yeah. to publishers. Yep. That's yeah. what that is. Yeah. That's because the kids were walking in the road. Yeah. Yeah. And we got a grant from the Department of Energy, believe it or not, to put that on there. And we, we ran it from Clemmo all the way mm -hmm. to Publishers Parkway. Mm -hmm. And Joe keeps it clear every year when the plow. And the kids that used to run at Arnold Thomas, the track team, used to run down, they used to run the road, remember? And the difference so, there, though, is in, in the wintertime, it's a fair because it's a curved road, so our, our wing is doing this the whole time, whereas in the, in like Old Ridge Road, it's one smooth <coughs> plow this week. So we're looking at you can get my opinion on my website, uh, go look at it, there's a whole bunch there, uh, how much it costs, what's going on with it. And those are other options that Joe and I are looking, because like I said, we probably should have put the sidewalks in. 30 years ago. But when you moved in, we didn't do that because we were funding the police department and that's not what we did compared to what Penfield does. Penfield puts a lot of sidewalks in, but they're not funding the police department. So you have to look at the give and the take back 25 years ago. I wasn't here. That's what the forefathers decided to do. And now we're looking at what we can do to improve that situation. Also, also, if you really want to move to the town of Webster, it's really important for you to have sidewalks and, and street lights, there's the village of Webster. I just wanted to add to that because I actually live in the village and I live on Donnie, which is the uh, driveway to the rest of the Shands and the rest of the village. So I, I, I hear you because they're speeding down, and you know, Joe can probably speak to this, they fly down Donnie Avenue because there are no stop signs. Mm -hmm. If you can forget any of the side streets, everybody gets a stop sign, not down Donnie so, yeah, they just oh, and so I see you know, cars okay. going by and they're getting dirty from me all the time. I'm not up to shaking fist because I can't ride down the driveway that fast. But it, I see it, I see it all the time. The other thing is we do have sidewalks. But let's keep in mind, bicycles really aren't supposed to be on sidewalks. Bicycles are supposed to be in the road with the traffic and obeying the traffic laws. We have at least three individuals who are in an electric 
wheelchairs. They don't use the sidewalks either. They go down the road. And, I, and I'm terrified for them. Terrified. Because we I can can just, there's cars parked on the side. If somebody's going to pull out and they're going to get hit. So even though the sidewalks are there, not everyone will use them. And mm -hmm. it's not the solution for bikes. It's okay for a kid on a big wheel or a tricycle like or something. But as they get older, that's not where the bike belongs. So, you know, we have to keep all of those things in mind when we look at solutions. Okay. Okay. Can you tell a little more about the down the street? Is that no. No, we, we, we would look into getting some grants or work it into the town budget. Okay. The other way, <coughs> yes, that would be a sidewalk district. Okay. And what we're talking about is a lighting district. If you wanted lights on the end of the street or at an intersection, like Joe said, there's not that much money. We can do a site a lighting district for you if you want to put the lights up. But like I said, we twenty-five. Have to get the whole neighborhood. Right. And the thing is with that, we could put it in the town budget before I could find a grant. The $50 sidewalks, then I got to find my uniform sidewalk. There's differences there. So, you know, there's some options and we continue to look. I, I don't know if you know, but we are doing sidewalks from Five Mile Line to the Village this year. And that's going to be a big project there. But we got a grant for it. That's $1.4 million just, just for that stretch. It's only 1.47 miles. It's going to cost over 1.5 million. So, sidewalks are expensive, but we're trying to find ways that we can do something here without disrupting your front yards. You know, taking away your front yard because honestly, we're going to take away your front yard. Mm -hmm. and okay. To, and to, to go further, than that, once if you if you were to decide that you wanted sidewalks and you were willing to pay for them, it's just the beginning because once you got them, you got to maintain them. Mm -hmm. What you're going to do with them in the winter is up to you. Even with maintaining them in the winter, the village will really plow them. They're slippery. They're slippery. Most yeah. people end up walking in the street. Yeah. Okay. okay, so we have an action plan. I'll get back to Mr. Adams shortly next week after we have a couple meetings. We're off on Monday, so give me some time. We have to meet next week because we're off on Monday. So, uh, appreciate yeah. your Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming out. Thank you, sir. Thank <laughs> you.